goal. So hi guys, James Dawes here from SRUSA. Uh, we've got another fantastic podcast for you today. Um, you know, I'm joined by Charlie Matchell. Uh, now Charlie is uh, a Wingate uh, in Eastern Tennessee uh, State University alumni. You know, he spent four very successful years out in the States um, before he transitioned into the professional game. And since then, he's, he's gone on a bit of journey, really, all around the world. He's played in, uh, you know, Denmark and then over to the Faroe Islands and now playing out over in Asia. Uh, had a brief spell in Cambodia and now in Singapore. So really excited today. I know Charlie's going to bring a fantastic insight into the options that, that players have got that they might not consider at this point. Uh, and uh, really excited to hear about his story and how he ended up in the States. So uh, without further ado, Charlie, how are we doing? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you, mate. I'm good. All the better for speaking to you. <laughs> yeah, no, thank you for coming on. We really appreciate it. So, uh, start off, Charlie, I'll, I'll sort of throw it over to you. If you could give us sort of a, a brief background on yourself. Where you, I know you're originally from Newcastle, England. So, if you just want to give us a background on where you grew up playing and, and sort of a bit about your journey as a whole, that'd be fantastic. Yeah, so uh, I was uh, at a young age, you know, playing at, uh, in, in Newcastle. I was playing local football and uh, went in the academy uh, for a little bit when I was young, much younger. Um, they released me when I was uh, nine years old, I think. And it was one of those that, you know, it's a bit of a dream crusher at that age. You think uh, you're doomed and that's not going to go uh, the way you wanted it to go. Um, but then I ended up going back, ended up uh, playing with the development squad. Um, and at 16, decided to uh, go to Monks Eaton Football Academy, which was kind of a, a specialist for sending players over to America. Uh, they've had a good reputation for doing it. They're, they're really good coaches who are coaches now at South Shields, um, back, back in, uh, in the north of England, uh, which has also been a really successful club. Um, but yeah, I had Graham Fenton, Lee, Lee Picton, two great coaches uh, there, and so played there for two for two years. Um, was close to signing with Darlington when I was uh, sixteen uh, to maybe play as a as a pro there. But uh, club went into administration, so that that kind of went down the palm and that happened. So it was kind of a good thing that I'd end up going to Monk Seton, you know, to do my studies and um, and get the chance to go over to America. So I uh, the my first year at Monk Seton. The American coaches came over and had a look uh, at some players, and they ended up taking four boys from from our team, the who were the second years there, over to Wingate. And uh, f from an early age, I'd always considered going over to America. I wanted to. My stepbrother had uh, gone over to New York to play, and he was four or five years older than I am. So seeing what he was doing uh, was was really really interesting for me. Uh, so when I got the opportunity uh, at 18 to go over to to Wingate to North Carolina with Three, uh, three of my friends, the teammates who I played with, uh, and also four players that I'd already played with the year before. It was, a, it was a no-brainer. Mm -hmm. So I uh, spent yeah three, three really good years there at Wingate, and then moved to East Tennessee State um, for my senior year. Really, and yeah, so it's sort of a natural progression. Did you go to Monks Eaton then with the idea that you were going to go to America, or was it a case to see what happens in those two years, and then if, if America comes, then it, then it happens. Uh, it was definitely, yeah, I remember the first meeting with the guys at Monk Seton, I'd, I'd said, um, ah, my main aim is to go to America, and they kind of said, well, this is, the, this is the right place to be, and they were going to help me uh, any way they could to, to kind of get that uh, get that sorted for me. So, um, like I said, we had a really successful team, which helped, you know, it's, it's definitely not easy for, for to get that platform that with coaches and connections so uh it was, i was really lucky that they had the connections uh that they did at the time um and the coach came over like i said and we we played really well that season got the national final and uh they ended up taking me so it was, it was really good yeah yeah and was it obviously wingate on the on the table very good d2 program you know they've gone on to win national titles since in, in recent years and things but was it an easy decision for you or was there still a bit of you that thought you know, maybe I stay in England and, and try my chance out here, or what was it about the US route that was so appealing to you? I think, uh, like I said, with my stepbrother going over, he'd been at Hartley, um as signed uh, as a scholar, and I used to go and watch him all the time, and I kind of saw the route that he'd taken, and uh, it was one of those that I... I saw how much he enjoyed it, and I'd seen pictures and uh, the, the facilities and stuff, uh, and the the way the crowds he was playing in front of, and compared to what he talked to me about playing at Hartlepool and then playing there, it was like 
this could be better. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I could try and try and stick around and maybe play in the lower leagues and and try and earn a little bit of money doing it that way. But I thought uh, a chance to get a little bit of more of an education, you know, I thought really important to 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 try and get that degree so that if, if football wasn't going to work out, then I had something to fall back on. Um, and was you so, still was he playing college at this time, or was he playing uh, like professional or anything? No, he'd he'd just finished um, in the year before I went. He'd just finished over in uh, in America, so he was uh, he didn't end up playing after that. He mm -hmm. he got into uh, he did really well with his studies and got into a, a job over there in America. So uh, it was a little bit like oh, such a good player going over and maybe not making it after that, but. It was an uh, opportunity that he'd said there's definitely possibilities to do it. Um, mm -hmm. And to be able to go out and, you know, play with uh, good foreign players, uh, good facilities, train like a professional um, and get looked after like a professional whilst being able to live in America. You know, North Carolina is a beautiful place. Uh, the sun was shining when we got there, 30, <laughs> 35 degrees, I think it was. So, yeah, yeah you can imagine eight, eight Geordies in 35 degrees degrees um all together it was it was brilliant yeah i can imagine it obviously made it a lot easier we're going over with lads that you were playing with already in england so that made the transition easy but in terms of um you know guys from the uk that do go over to uh, to america what do you think is the right attitude to go over with them and what expectations should they have of themselves and maybe of the experience as a whole uh, i think people will be really surprised to be honest you know my mentality going over, which was a bad mentality to have, was that we were going to be better than players over there. Uh, just stupidity, really. You think, because you, you played in England, that you're going over and oh, it's going to be easy. You know, Americans, they don't even like football. They call it soccer. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it was literally one of them. Um, so we went over with that kind of uh, mentality that we were better than people. And it was a short wake up call. I, I remember we played, first day we got there, we played five a side against five Brazilians. And we got absolutely slaughtered, like five Geordies slaughtered, 10 nil or something like that. And it was like, um, it was a big wake-up call. I think when you go over there, you've got to, you've got to be really, really uh, motivated and uh, ready to, to play against bigger, stronger, athletic players um, who you may be te more technical than, but they're hard workers and, you know, it's a good standard. And you're playing against boys from all over the world uh, mm. who are obviously committed to playing football because you don't just give up three or four years of your life uh, if you don't want to try and progress and, and get better. Yeah, definitely. So looking at back, back at your freshman year, you know, it, it was a decent season. I think you played 17 matches, um, started uh, the most of the, uh, most most of those games. So how, how do you look back as that first year as a whole? Is it a season of learning and adjusting to the way? Would you, would you say the style was different to what you used to? Did you have to adapt parts of your game to suit that? Yeah, I think when when I got over, I I was um, I was I wasn't big enough. I, I wasn't strong enough. Like I was, I think I was um, clever enough to play there, but I just wasn't more. I wasn't physical enough. The way that we wanted to play uh, at Monk Seaton, we'd all been passing, all passing game, um, and you could get on the back shoulder. I was a striker at the time, and can from movement, you could create yourself opportunities. And then suddenly I'm playing against 23-year-olds, uh, fast, strong players. And if you're not that experienced on the league and you're not that experienced on how you're going to play, I wasn't one of those players that was really, really technical, taking on players all the time. So I had to get adjusted to it. Um, like you said, it was uh, good to go over with, with boys who have played in the team and that made it a lot easier. And I, I managed to get some goals and, and we did all right. but. Uh, the first four or five matches, I, I didn't, uh, I didn't start in, and I was, I was, I wasn't happy about it at the time. But I knew now, looking back on it, that it was uh, just as well because I wasn't, I don't think I was ready for for going into that that kind of system and that kind of style. Yeah, and with that in mind, do you think the uh, one of the things that we've talked about in recent weeks um, is, do you think the UK is sort of missing a trick in that regard that guys are expected to make the jump at eighteen year old into men's football? Uh, and sometimes, whether it's from a physical point of view, like you pointed out, or a mental point of view, that it's not that they're not good enough. Maybe they're just not ready there. And do you think is that why that it's it suited you a lot more going down the American route? Definitely, yeah. Um, I think, like you said, I mean, you obviously have some exceptional talents at 18, and they, they smash it in the league, and and they do amazing. But uh, 
players who have played in the academies, uh, like we were talking about earlier, uh, West Ham United under 23 captain, and they're good players, but you sometimes come across these players and they don't absolutely smash it straight away. You know, it takes them a little bit of time to get to get into it, and that's fine. You know, you've got your four years, uh, your first year is going to be a learning curve. If you go out there and you're doing really well um, straight away, then brilliant. You might you might decide that it wasn't the best route for you, but I feel like 90, 95 percent of the players they need that year to understand the league and they need the to understand that you're not better than everybody. You're coming over to America and everyone's kind of in the same boat, pushing for the same kind of thing. Mm-hmm. It's a pretty humbling experience, really, isn't it? Because you go from being one of the best players in your, you know, in your area to now you're competing with guys, like you said, Brazilians, Chileans, all that stuff from around the world now. Uh, so it's a, a brilliant yeah. point. But what I want to ask you uh, specifically on that is you then took that from your freshman year and sort of went up a level in your sophomore year. I think you won the SAC Player of the Year. Um, you know, and amongst other, you know, NSCAA um, All American Third Team, I think you made that year as well. So a massive, massive jump there from your freshman year. What do you think were the main differences in, in how you took, your, you know, you get into that sort of next level? Uh, like, like I said before, I had that first year to kind of, uh, you know, scout it out sort of thing. Um, I, I started to understand what I needed to do to to get the best out of myself there, and um, I remember getting home and. I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't, I don't think I was fit enough uh, for the American game. I was fit enough for the English game, but I wasn't fit enough for the American game. Uh, I say for the English game, at that level, I was fit enough, you know, not professional level, um, but fit enough for the, I wasn't fit enough for the American game. So I went home, really uh, tried to improve on that. Um, and playing that year, I had a Brazilian striker next to me, um, played that first year and, you know, he was coming towards the end of his time there. Uh, he was a, a junior, really pushing on, and he was the he was the kind of main man. And then his senior year, he kind of took me under his wing, and uh, me, him, and the coach had a few chats. And that season would just would just work really well. And it was one of those; it fell into place really well for me. And I suddenly got confidence, and I uh, realised that I was good. And they made me a captain, and suddenly I felt like I was. Not, not in this uh, big pool of players where everyone was bigger and faster and stronger. So I had to try and take that burden on my shoulders. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember he got an injury at the time and the coach kind of said, right, well, now is your time to, to step up. And um, just start, just one of those things, it clicked for me and I was getting a lot more of the ball. You know, people trusted me more and, and, it, and the goals came and it was a really good season for me. Yeah, and, and just on that, you know, um, these seasons are so intense and they're so compact, so it's really important to sort of hit the ground running in a sense. So what do you think, from your experience playing at a, a decent, very decent college level, what, what, is, what makes a successful team? I think you've got to have a mix of, um, I don't think necessarily all a full foreign team uh, is necessarily the best way to go. I think you've got to have a mix of, those American players who are really, really strong, athletic, you know, fullbacks for me, the American fullbacks are, are brilliant. They're just fitness wise, they're mad, they're, they're not shy of a tackle and they're, they're up and down and they're just what you need. Um, I think the facilities wise, it obviously helps going over to a place that has, has good facilities. Mm-hmm. You, we were looked after extremely well at Wingate and, and East Tennessee. Um, so I was really lucky, but I mean, we'd go to some some colleges and it would be tough. Like it, it looked tough for them. Um, I think getting your foreign signings right as well is is massive for for a coach as well. Um, you know, you can't rely on uh, incoming freshmen to absolutely smash it. So building your team uh, around. I think when I was there, it was kind of like a it was almost like a four year project project that they were hoping to win the national championship and they ended up doing that in in the four years Mm -hmm. uh so building that team getting the right chemistry uh getting you the right foreign players and and having those core american players as well i think is is massive yeah i and obviously we're focusing massively on the football side but in your first couple of years in america how was the transition for you in terms of you're going into a new culture you know, completely different country and how how did you sort of settle in that regard and find the, the lifestyle uh, and everything involved. Well, with with us going over with with uh, four boys from Newcastle and the previous four, uh, it was a very very easy transition. Um, are you still there? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
very easy transition. Basically, uh, living with, I was living with four, like the four boys I went over with. So we were all kind of in the same boat. Um, I'd had friends who'd gone over to by themselves to, to colleges. And I think if I could choose to do it again, I might have done that route. Um, I think when you go over, you kind of shelter yourself if you're going over with a large group of people. Uh, we were the English boys sort of thing uh, in, in North Carolina, in Wingate. So we all stuck together. It was it was easy. It was almost like you were with eight of your best mates on holiday, but you've got to play football every day. Um, the transition going into school was was hard. You know, we'd done uh, the BTEC um, diplomas at Monk Seton, mm-hmm. and it's not. It wasn't the hardest of work. Uh, it was uh, one of those things that I kind of found quite easy. So suddenly, I'm doing French and maths and English in my <laughs> first year, and it's like. It's that was hard, you know. I wasn't I wasn't expecting to have to do French and maths again, like what I'd done when I was fifteen, sixteen. So that side was hard, but the fact that I was there with four, four, five, six uh, boys from Newcastle, it was it was much much easier for me than maybe it would be for another person. Yeah, definitely. Um, and eventually, you know, you go on to to, to leave Wingate and to transfer to ETSU. What what brought about around that decision? Because obviously, like you say, Wingate's. Um, they're into this four-year vision, if you like, and things are going really well, and you're building year upon year. So, what was it personally that told, excuse me, that you wanted to transfer? Um, I'd looked, you know, when I was a uh, sophomore and I had that good season um, with being the All-American. I'd, I'd, had, I'd spoken to a couple of people. Um, one of my good friends, Tom Devitt, who was playing at the time in uh, the second division, he just transferred over to Longwood University, uh, Division One. Uh, and I thought about it in my sophomore year I'd maybe had an opportunity if I'd uh, really pushed for it but after having such a good year and, and being a captain and stuff it was uh, it was one of those things that I felt maybe I should keep going you know we've got a chance next year of maybe winning that national that national tournament mm-hmm. um, after three years you know we'd won the league uh, two times won the the cup two times we'd not quite made it uh, through to the national tournament and uh, a few things just went wrong, you know, going uh, my junior year, uh, sorry, at the finish of my junior year, the spring wasn't amazing. Um, I'd, there'd been a few problems, you know, off the pitch, there was a lot of things going on and it was one of those things I just needed a new challenge and um, I wanted to really push when I was, uh, was going to be a senior and I think when you go over and you can kind of sense when a coach is really pushing certain players. Um, that he he maybe wants to be a professional or he really wants to push in that one direction. You know, some players were going off to to play for a week in uh, professional teams for trials and stuff like that when they were juniors. And I didn't feel like I was getting that opportunity, even though I'd had a good season. You know, I'd put a lot of effort in and I'd, and I'd done well and I ended up being a, the conference player of the year. So um, it was one of those that I just wanted to get a fresh start, um, have a season uh, in that Division One. Uh, see what it was kind of like standard wise um try and play against some of the best uh, colleges in in the country and, and and have a go doing it that way and see what i can make of it after that mm-hmm, definitely um so so obviously you make the transition across to etsu uh, excuse me etsu and how is you know there's a lot of speculation around the differences between the levels in america you know division one division two um was there any notable differences for you going to that level or stepping up not, not, not really compared to Wingate. I think this overall standard of the league was much better. You know, when we were playing at Wingate, we were beating teams sometimes at the bottom of the league, eight, nine, nil, like five, six, whatever. We were smashing teams, and there was maybe two or three of the teams that were close to us that would give us a good game. But those lower teams, we would, we would absolutely hammer. So that was the difference. You know, I went into the SOCON, which is a really physical, tough league. Uh, not really any team standing out necessarily. So it became a battle. Um, on that aspect, it was the lower ends of the squad were better. You know, there's better American players. Um, mm-hmm. I think it's huge to have uh, the lower end of the squad just makes training a lot better. Um, so it was going into that, you know, training was, was better, but maybe not necessarily the 11 that I played with at Wingate. I think it would be a really good game against the 11 at ETSU. Um, maybe even Wingate would have beaten them. Um, 
So it was one of those, I don't necessarily think the standard was that much different, but the overall training and, uh, you know, the teams that we got to play were just so much better than what I'd played in, against in Division 2. Yeah, and you talked about how you, you know, your senior year, and I think every college player can relate that's gone through the process. That's the year that you say, right, I want to make my mark in this year. So just in terms of mentality, what's different between, you know, the years um, as you develop? So as you go through, you know, start off as a freshman and sophomore, and then you go into your late years as a junior and a senior, what, what sort of changes do you think mentally? I think when, you, when you're a freshman, you know, you're not really sure what's coming. Um, you're just excited to get out there and give it a go sort of thing. Uh, then you're getting your sophomore year you've had that experience and I think not not many people really expect much from your freshman year but then you start getting a little bit of expectation from your sophomore year which extends to your junior year um, your junior year for me you, it's, it's a hard one because for me I ended up transferring so it was good to have a good junior year but I feel like a lot of people feel like well I can't really do anything in my junior year you know I've got next year I've still got one more year um, so it can kind of get into that mentality where, well, if it doesn't quite work, then I've always got next year, mm-hmm. which is wrong. You know, you want to have, you, at the end of the day, they're going to look back at your, uh, at your all your years and see how you've done. Mm-hmm. Um, so then you get to that senior year and it's like all, all everything's on the, like, on the go. You know, you're wanting to show, speak to uh, different coaches. You're wanting to get attention from, from professional teams. So uh, suddenly it's like, oh, this is, this is it, you know, and it comes by so quickly. Um, I remember that that last game. You don't really quite believe it that you finished that four years, and yeah. uh, it's it's kind of surreal. You know, you've been through that that whole process, and then suddenly it's down to we were in the national tournament, and it's suddenly down to one game, and then then that's it. Do you know what I mean? So it's uh, you're playing for your, you're playing for an extra game now, and it's like playing in a cup. So it's brilliant. Do you think that year at ETSU, do you think you learned anything specifically from being in a different environment or was it more, like we just said, from that sort of mentality change, getting a bit older and realising, right, this is my last chance to make a real good go of it? I think for me, it was going over, obviously going over there, I was coming in as a senior, uh, so it was a lot easier going in. Um, I was really lucky to go into a team that were very welcoming. There was no kind of... Uh, outspoken leaders who were worried about positions or worried about a new fre- uh, transfer coming in. Everyone was really, really welcoming. And I went in with the mentality that I wanted to try and win the league again uh, with a team that had struggled the year before. So it was, it was. I would, I would say, it was a learning curve outside of, um, outside of football because I was in suddenly a bigger school there was 20,000 I think it was Um, I got to experience that side of thing Um, but on the football pitch it was more just being able to oh sorry my my headphones just died can you still hear me (laughs) I can still hear you mate yeah Um, is that all right yeah that's fine mate yeah yeah Technical difficulties. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, going in, you know, uh, like I said, it was it was a learning curve and the fact that I actually went and played a different position. I went and turned into a defensive midfielder. I got injured in the first game, my first collegiate game for ETSU. I tore my meniscus. So um, I, it was kind of like, you know, I, it was, I was playing against a team called High Point and I was really close to signing with them. And then we went there, my first game, I'd just been winning all the time with Wingate and we got smashed 5-1 and I told my, my meniscus. And I thought, like, what have I done here? This is a nightmare. Um, ended up not getting surgery. Only missed one game. Uh, not sure how at the time. Not sure how looking back at it now either. Um, but wasn't, wasn't sharp enough to be a striker at the time. Just wanted to be on the pitch. So they put me in defensive midfield. And luckily enough for me, it was... Uh, it was a good change because I ended up making a, made a career uh, so far out of playing defensive midfield. So, I, like I said, everything happens for a reason. So it was yeah, it was a, it was learning. It was it was a big learning thing for me in the fact that I had to learn a new position and I had to learn a different environment. I was playing with different players. I wasn't in my own comfortable bubble anymore with my boys from England around me. I had to go and talk to people. I had to. It was a completely different experience and one I was really really happy I did. Yeah, and just just on that, Charlie, so looking back now, uh, for lads maybe that are looking to go over into the freshman year, 
or, or if you can give any a bit of advice to yourself going over there as a freshman, what, what do you think lads can do to be as successful as possible right from day one? I think um, you've got you've to be ready in terms of your body going over there. It's at 18, I mean, you can, it's possible to do it. You know, we weren't ready. We thought it was, we were having fun and when we were 18. You know, we finished football and it was like, oh, we've got three, three months before we go to America. Let's make the most of it sort of thing. Mm-hmm. We're all going on holiday and stuff like that. And I wish at the time I'd really focused on it because I feel like I probably could have had my sophomore year as a, as a freshman, you know, in terms of being more ready. I wouldn't have been 100% ready, but I would have been a lot more ready. So um, I, I think we just, also didn't really... Just on, that, just on that as well, I think it's not only that period, that three months when you get out there, I think things like the spring are really important as well. Would you agree? Like, I think when you get older, you, you sort of welcome and you cherish the spring season more often because it's a chance to develop and like you talk about if it's physically mentally you get that that chance where it's a little less pressure you've not got to perform week in week out and you can take that time to develop would you agree definitely yeah yeah and like you said you you get there's a lot more leeway for getting your body ready um trying different things you know you're not you get to challenge yourself against better schools we would go and play all the best division one schools at the time and and that was something that we really, really relished. You know, we were playing professional teams as well, uh, some USL teams. And luckily for us, we had a good spring schedule. I know some people go over there and they're not happy because they maybe don't get the games they want to get. And sometimes the coach is playing all the players that he hasn't uh, necessarily played. But if you're in a good setup, um, like we were, the coach took that, took that opportunity to be like, right now, this is the time to kind of enjoy yourself. But keep playing, get your bodies right, but we still want to win. So it was, it was, a, good, it was a good time for us. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. I, think, I think this is one of the questions I want to ask you, and I think it, it probably it's different each person you ask, but obviously since you've, you've gone on to you know, play professionally in, in, in the different environments and what have you, but was there one moment, in whether it's your senior year or before that, where you thought, right, I'm good enough here to make this jump now, or... Is it, you know, just over time you built yourself up to that level where you think, if I keep working at this level, I will make it? Or was there one specific moment? What do you think? Um, when, when, I trans- when I transferred over to, to ETSU, I, uh, I wasn't really sure because I thought this is going to determine whether, because I didn't really know that much about the, the difference in standard and the depth of squad and, and that kind of thing. And I thought, if I can do it here, then maybe I can make that jump. Uh, and when I got there and I got into training and I started being relied on as one of the better players in the team, I thought, right now, maybe this is an opportunity for me. I think when you do play and you're not playing in one of the top teams and you're not in that uh, maybe top 10 team or whatever, you're, you're looking thinking, could I do that? And you're not really sure. Uh, but when I got that opportunity of playing those games, I thought to myself, maybe, maybe I can do this. Um, I wasn't really sure where or, or when it would happen, but it was one of those things that I thought I could do it um, after that season. Mm-hmm. I, I would say it would probably be my, uh, my senior year. You know, when, when, you get, when you get given awards in America, you, they're not necessarily because you're the best player on the team. You know, I got the, I got the, um, the South Atlantic Conference Player of the Year, but I wasn't the best at, at, on my team that year. I scored, I scored the goals, but our captain, Rossi, and uh, our centre-back, uh, Alex Nelson, at the time, they were, they were unbelievable for us. But they only, they only scored four goals and got five assists or something like that. And, yeah. And so, I, and, and just one thing I want to ask you about that. So, you, like, like you just mentioned, that you played with a lot of lads that are fantastic footballers and have probably gone on to good things. I know uh, some of them have gone on to play professionally as well. What is, what is it about those players uh, like yourself and others that sort of something clicks and, 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 and they make, are able to make that jump? What is it that they do that others don't, do you think? I mean, for us, we were, we were lucky in the fact that after training, you know, we were so competitive that we wanted to do extra every day. Um, a lot of teams that, even a lot of players that we played with, you know, the, some of the Brazilians, they were brilliant, unbelievable. But the minute the training finished, they were off. Do you know what I mean? They were off to get their, they get their dinner and that was it. We always used to stay out and football was, was everything. You know, we were going over there. Some players go over there um, for studies and that's perfectly fine. You know, it's a chance to keep playing, but you're there to, to do your studies. We were just there for football. 
and we wanted to make sure that if we're from the environment we'd come from in Newcastle, it was like, we're going to keep that up. And we were all constantly on each other. Um, there were some players that, you know, were they're better footballers than what I am. And they ended up stopping playing because they just, I don't know if it's work ethic or if it's um, just, I, I don't know what the word is, but they just, they kind of gave up a little bit and yeah, they let themselves bit, down, I would say. Yeah, maybe yeah. that drive wasn't quite that. Uh, and this is what I want to ask you. So, the, the, the point where, you know, you realise, you know, maybe this is going to sort of be a reality in terms of playing professionally. What sort of options did you have after college, after coming up that season with the ETS Rio? I went, uh, I went to the two or three teams in the USL. I went down to Charleston Battery um, and I played as a defensive midfielder, but they needed a striker at the time. And I ended up going down and went there for two, a week and a half, two weeks, played in three games and I scored a hat-trick in one of the games as a striker. And I thought, right, well, if you don't get signed after you score a hat-trick or you don't get an opportunity, then there's something clearly wrong here. And I remember where there was a list and they had about 50 or 40 trialists there from day one and it was down to about eight or nine or something. And uh, they were taking maybe four in a pre-season with them. And I wasn't on that list straight after that game. And I thought to myself, like, what what can I do now? I was like, that's if I'm it's obviously just not meant to be. Um, so then I'd been invited over to a combine um, that my coach had helped me sort out at the time. And uh, I went over and played in that, which was uh, over in New York. And it was basically with uh, Danish, uh, Swedish, and I think Norwegian coaches that were all there, Scandinavians, looking for... It, was, it come from... There's a Danish club, uh, I think FC Norseland, I think they're called, and they have an American owner. And uh, they were trying to bring over a lot of young players from America um, to come and play in Denmark in the lower leagues. And I was there and I met the coach and I, I played in a couple of games and uh, got that opportunity from that. And it was, it was kind of don't look back after that. I, after that experience in the USL and, and not, not being offered a chance to play, in a, play with that team after doing what I'd done, I thought maybe it's, maybe it's a chance to get myself over to a different country and, and see what, what the possibilities would be there. Yeah, and I, th- I think one of the key things from that is, is not not getting discouraged, right? And it's like, it's a lot easier said than done. Like you say, there's a lot of good players that don't necessarily um, go into the professional game, but because there's so many obstacles in the way. So one thing I have noticed about you, you seem to make it happen at all. You know, whether it's in, it could be in the North Pole for all UK, you know, you seem to want to just play football. Do you think that you've just got to keep to your morals and what your standards and sort of just pursue it at all costs? Yeah, I think... Obviously, there the gets to a, there has to be a point where if it's not um, financially for you, or if it just doesn't work, and you know, there's there's definitely a point where you you get to a maybe be an age where you think right, well, maybe I have to explore a different avenue. But uh, when you're coming out of uh, American college, I think you've got to give it a go wherever it is. You know, get that experience because you just don't know what it's going to lead to. And I mean, uh, me going over to Denmark. I'd never, ever played at a standard like it. It was the second year of Danish football. And I thought, going over there, they're not going to be that good. And it was, they were unbelievable. And you would have thought that you learned best. from college, mate. <laughs> you said that the same about when you went over to college, didn't you? But yeah, no, it's interesting. Exactly. Do, you think, do you think college prepared you for that jump, though? You, obviously, it's not, there are, there's obviously levels to the game, right? And at the professional level, whether you're in second division in Denmark or wherever you're playing, there is going to be a little bit of a jump. But do you think everything that you learned from college allowed you to, to, to make that jump a little bit easier, if that makes sense? Um, I think, I think you, do, you do get sheltered quite a bit in Denmark, you know, I mean in the uh, US, sorry, uh, in college. Um, not everything's on the line. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's amazing, you know. The leagues are really, really, they're good, they're strong, everyone wants to win the league, but if you don't, it's like, oh, well, this next year. And if the coach, the coach's job isn't on the line, the physio's job isn't on the line, like each player on fighting for that contract. So I wasn't mentally ready for training. Like training was quite easy for me. I thought in America, when I went over to Tennessee, you know, I, I would have put myself in maybe the top five in the squad at the time. Um, and I went over there and I was suddenly I was in the, probably the bottom five, you know, 
uh, going over into that team. And it was physically I was ready uh, for the size that I was. But fitness-wise, I wasn't ready because I'd had that long spring off um, and maybe given myself too much of a break. But uh, I think there were certain things that, you know, training every day, um, the gym work, being looked after, uh, nutrition-wise towards the end of it, everything was uh, was starting to prepare me to be a professional. But that, that, that like, uh, that standard jump, I wasn't ready for. Mm-hmm. And like I said, so you, you, you've sort of gone around the world with your football now. So you, you played, you know, you went to Denmark and then over to the Faroe Islands and uh, then Cambodia now in Singapore. So um, what what is, where, where are you at with your football now? What's on the horizon for you personally and what do you still want to achieve out of football? What's what's your aspirations? Uh, so, um, yeah, I'm currently playing in Singapore uh, Premier League. Um, I mean, there's there's been a few great Good players, you know, played over here. Jermaine Pennant was playing over here a year and a half, two years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, towards the back end of his career. But um, I think uh, this was a good step for me at the moment. You know, I'm playing in the AFC, which is the Europa League of, of Asian football. So if you do well in that, you're coming up against huge teams. Um, and if you can get into that uh, AFC or ACL, which is the, the Champions League, then you're playing against uh, uh, Chinese teams, Hulk, Oscar, you know. Uh, it's a, it's it's amazing how close you can get to those players, um, and still being able to travel travel different parts of Asia in this tournament. Uh, we've been over to Myanmar, we're going to Vietnam, um, and playing against some of the best players in 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 Asia. It's 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 a great experience, you know. Different, but um, for me now, it's about pushing on and trying to get as get as high as I can, kind of uh, over in Asia. Um, it's a it's a ladder over here. It's hard, you know. It's there's only three or four foreigners per team, um, and there's so many players that are fighting for those positions. Um, mm. There's agents that get involved uh, that maybe put players in that don't necessarily deserve to be there. Um, over here, it's hard, you know. You every match you're being looked at, and you can kind of be chopped at any point. It's a little bit crazy. Yeah. Um, uh, a lot of players have come over and they're three matches in and they've only scored one goal as a striker and suddenly they're not good enough and it's just, it's madness. So it keeps, it's keeping me on my toes, you know, it, it motivates me all the time to try and keep stepping up the ladder and I think uh, financially wise, it's better than playing for me in a, a League 2 or League 1 team um, and you can live in good conditions and live in the sun sort of and experience that kind of side of life. And just, just with that, how, how important do you think it is for players? And this is one of the major benefits, obviously, of the US college soccer route is the fact that you get your degree with that as well. So how important do you think it is to have other focuses outside of football as well? Not planning for the worst in a sense, but, you know, just having that bit of security behind you. Oh, massively, yeah. Uh, I, I'm so happy I did it, you know, learning like I said it was it was a nightmare going and uh doing French at the start but I played with French players and you know it sounds ridiculous but I could have a little conversation with them and then I went and did my business and my sports management degree and you get so much time off the pitch especially when you're playing abroad um even in America you get a lot of time to yourself so to be able to have something that you've learned that you can kind of take in and, and plan for after football or during football, I think is so important. Um, being able to make connections and, and be able to say to people, well, I've got this as well that I can maybe help you with, or you go into a club and, you know, a lot of clubs will still look at it. Uh, they see that players are switched on. People might want to work with you because they know that you may have a degree in, in something. So, um, I think it's vitally important, you know, especially for when you finish. Um, we're not playing at the Premier League. We're not earning hundred thousand pounds a week. So when you finish football, it's you could be thirty, thirty-three, thirty-four, whatever you finish. And then what do you do? Do you stay in football and do your coaching badges? Yeah, but maybe you want to try something different. You might be sick of football. Um, mm-hmm. So. I'm so happy I did it, and I'm I'm looking forward to doing with something with it when I finish. What What did you actually come out with in the end? Then what was your degree in? I was sports management. Sports management. Okay. Yeah. Um. And obviously from that, you know, you've uh, you've got your YouTube channel now. Uh, go in and little bits and bobs like that. So what What's your purpose for for, for that those sort of things? Uh, basically, I 
like I'd said before, I'd had a few messages um, on my on different social medias about uh, maybe players wanting to come over to Scandinavia or players asking how how is it possible that you've gone from maybe USA to to Asia in mm-hmm. in a short period of time and how do I do it sort of thing. And I was kind of doing a little bit of research and there's not really many players out here who are uh, kind of given an insight into what it's like uh, to play abroad. And, you know, when I was coming out of college, one of the first things I was looking was I was looking on YouTube. I was looking on people trying to look for websites. I wanted to know what it was like. How do I get out to a country? What am I going to expect? Uh, I wish I had the information I had now when I was leaving college, you know, Mm -hmm. And so it's more of a, to give people a, an insight and a little bit of a, say, a heads up and also to help as many people as possible, really. Um, I just want to, if I can help a player who was in my position, I didn't really have that much help going out. You know, I had to kind of do it by myself. Mm-hmm. So if I can help a player who's, who's done well and who's kind of uh, fallen under the radar um, and help them get a, maybe a move into Scandinavia or whatever, then that would, that would be amazing for me. No, and I wish I wish it was around when I, you know, when I was going through the college system as well. Because you're right, there's a massive gap there. I don't think, um, yeah, you know, and enough people have documented, that, you know, how how people can make a success after college as well. But you know, I've watched your content and there's some fantastic insight in there. So where can people find that? Uh, so on YouTube, if you just type in Charlie Mitchell um, or Life as a Professional Abroad uh, on any of the YouTube, uh, or if you go over to my Instagram, there's a uh, a bio underneath with the link um, or Twitter or Facebook. It's all on there. So yeah. um, that's where you'd find all the videos on there. Yeah, we'll, we'll tag it, obviously, your socials in this afterwards. So just, just wrapping up, Charlie, you know, it's been fantastic to listen to how you sort of developed over the, the you know, your time in America and, you know, obviously having, having great success over in Asia now. So just last, you know, finishing up here on a bit of advice for people, whether it's a case of, you know, they're looking to go down the college soccer route or, you know, they're looking to turn professional after college. What sort of advice do you have for, for those guys? Uh, for, for people going into college or? Well, uh, yeah, let's start with people going into college and then we'll talk about people in college, you know, looking to, to make something afterwards as well. Uh, so, if you, yeah, if you're, going, if, you're going in, if you're going and get that opportunity into college, a lot of people, uh, from my experience, have, have had that opportunity and not taken it. Um, and to this day, it's their biggest regret. Like players who have maybe taken one year pros and then suddenly you can't get that opportunity again. Um, you may not be able to get into the NCAA. Players who have been offered the opportunity and they think maybe it's not, not for me. I don't really want to leave home. Um, I think if you get that opportunity, no matter where it is, take it. Uh, worst comes to worst, you go over there for a year and you might not like it and you might want to come home, but you've at least given yourself that opportunity to experience something. Uh, I think you become a man when you go over there. You've got to suddenly look after yourself. Uh, you're not at home. You're pushing the boat out. and uh, You also get to play, play football like a professional uh, and also get a degree at the same time. So anyone who's got that opportunity for me is an absolute no-brainer. Um, and then getting that opportunity to, to play, play after, I think take your first opportunity uh, that you, you get, no matter where it is, take it because, you know, all you can do is be the best in, in, that, in that team or in that country. And not many people get the opportunity to play professional football and, and, and get a salary for it. Uh, whether you go and take a small salary to start, which, you know, might happen, you've got to go out and prove yourself. And, and, and it's a ladder and it'll happen. You know, it's, uh, it's one of those processes that, we we all look on we all look on the TV and we see Marcus Rashford and player Mason Greenwood you know stepping into stepping into the professional game and and it clicking for them well ninety nine percent of us aren't gonna do that so yeah, you've got to you've got to come to the realization that yeah you might go to the Faroe Islands or you might go to I don't know Latvia or somewhere like that but you're playing as a professional and you'll be very very uh, surprised at how good the standard is. And you'll become a better player for it. So take whatever, take that would be my advice. Take whatever opportunity you get and make it a process. Build yourself to wherever you want to be. And and uh, and, it, and it's one of those things that I've done, and I'm really enjoying it. Yeah, definitely. And and one last question I want to ask because I think it, it is really um, it, it's interesting for me to to find out. Do you think you'd be where you are today without going through the process, you know, in America and stuff like that, or do you think, you know, you might have ended up 
going down the professional route a different way? What do you think you know your life would be like today if you hadn't have gone to America? I know it's an impossible I, question to answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be fair, I don't think I, I don't think I would have become a professional if I'd if I'd not gone to America. Um, and that's just me being honest. You know, I was 18 and I I wasn't good enough to play a professional club at the time. And I don't think without the the constant, you know, I, I maybe could have went and played a lower league and played part time. And I was lucky enough, like I said, to go to America, train. Uh, every day, play with better players, improve my game, and like I said, become a man. And so, if I if I'd not gone over, I don't think I would be where I am today. Um, I probably wouldn't have gone and got a degree either. I would have wanted to, you know. I said I applied for uh, universities and I got the opportunity to go to a university, but I just can't see my. I couldn't have seen myself staying there for a long a long time if I hadn't had the football on the side. So. You know, school's hard sometimes, but the football motivates you at the same time. You know, you've got to do well in school if you want to play on the pitch. So it's one of those things that comes hand in hand and gets you a degree at the end of it. And obviously, it's helped me get to where I am. Yeah, perfect. Well, Charlie, I can't thank you enough, mate, for, for giving up your time to do this today. Hopefully, you know. Thank you for having me, mate. I appreciate it. You no, know, like I said, I wish, I wish there was this sort of stuff around when I was uh, ready to go through the route. And like we say, he's another great example, Charlie. And, um, you know, went to Division Two, not not straight to Division One. Um, you know, he, he's gone a different route in terms of he didn't go straight back into English football or anything like that. He's gone um, outside his comfort zone in, in many respects and, and tried out, and it's luckily it's paying off for him right now. So, Charlie, it's been brilliant, and thank you very much, mate. Appreciate it, mate. Thank you. Cheers.